Welcome back, everyone. Muhammad said to learn the Quran from select persons. Abdul ibn Masud was one of them. Ibn Masud did have people who followed his reading, complying with Muhammad's order. Among them were the people of Kufa, who used his reading long after Uthman's standardization. Al-Baqalani, who died in the 11th century, also defended the use of Ibn Masud's reading. But Ibn Masud's reading was the subject of some conflict. Previously, we talked about the curious case of Ibn Shanabuth. Remember, he was the one who was flogged in the 10th century for using the readings of the companions, including the reading of Ibn Masud. Going backwards in time, Al-Hajjaj is also said to be not too fond of Ibn Masud's reading. He said he would behead anyone possessing a copy of Ibn Masud's codex and swore to erase Ibn Masud's reading with the rib of a swine. Imagine a Muslim official scraping the Quranic text off of a page with the bone of a pig. This is quite shocking. The great 9th century Hadith scholar Ibn Nabi al dunya transmits this report. Al-Hajjaj said of Ibn Masud that he reads the Quran like the Raja's poetry of Arabs and says, this is the Quran. If I ever were to meet him, I would strike his neck. And when we go back to Ibn Masud himself, we find that he wasn't treated much better than Ibn Shanabuth. In fact, he was probably treated a bit worse. He got himself in big trouble when he openly rejected the authority of Uthman's text. Further, he publicly scorned Zaid ibn Thabit and told the people of Kufa to reject Uthman's Quran and to conceal the Qurans that they already had so they couldn't be taken. Ibn Masud didn't stop there. He also publicly denounced Uthman's governor, Al-Walid. When summoned to Medina for his vociferous criticism of Al-Walid, Uthman seized the opportunity to shame Ibn Masud publicly so harshly that the caliph's comments earned the denunciation of even the prophet's wife, Aisha. For his impudence, the caliph ordered the aged companion to be beaten so severely that his ribs were broken. Most accounts assert that he recovered from his wounds and lived in Medina for three years afterwards. Uthman and Ibn Masud remained distant the rest of their lives. They didn't reconcile their relationship, or more importantly, their different readings of the Quran. This raises some interesting questions. Since Muhammad said to learn the Quran from Ibn Masud and Ibn Masud opposed Uthman's Quran, why should modern Muslims accept anything based on Uthman's recension? If there is only one Quran perfectly preserved from the time of Muhammad as we often hear, what did Uthman and Ibn Masud have to differ about? Since Uthman, who opposed Ibn Masud, and Muhammad, who endorsed Ibn Masud, cannot both be right, which one is? If Uthman was correct about Ibn Masud, what does that say about Muhammad's knowledge of the correct Quran? If Muhammad was right about Ibn Masud, then why should Muslims trust Uthman's standardization, which differs from Ibn Masud's codex? There are some important questions to ask about that hadith as well. Remember, Muhammad said to learn the Quran from Ibn Masud, among others. al ajaj said he would have killed Ibn Masud, would scrape his reading off with a bone of a pig, and behead anyone who was found with Ibn Masud's reading. Let's do a thought experiment and first assume the Hadith is authentic. A couple of conclusions follow. Al-Hajjaj, working under Caliph Abd al-Malik, directly contradicted Muhammad and threatened to enforce his own policy with violence. This means that Muhammad's words were either not well known at the time or not very highly regarded by the Caliph. Muslims wouldn't want to grant either one of these conclusions. On the other hand, let's assume this Hadith is forged to further the interests of the Abbasids. In that case, Al-Hajjaj never knew Muhammad said that because he never did. This would mean that the Abbasids were willing to forge narrations, even about the Quran, putting them on the lips of Muhammad. That raises the question, what else was forged? Blackjack, who you see in the comments section occasionally, dug up and translated some sources for this video. So here's a big thanks to him. Check out his blog, The Islam Issue, in the description box. He does a lot of great work right from the Arabic sources. He's also been threatened with physical harm for his blog, so you know he's doing something right. Speaking of physical harm, check out this video to see the curious case of Ibn Shanabuth, another fascinating example of someone being persecuted for using the wrong version of the miraculously preserved Quran. Thanks for watching.